that out. Anyway, 20 members of Congress sending a letter to Treasury Secretary Tim Geithner telling him it is a slanted deal and one that favors unions over pretty much everybody else. My next guest, one of the congressmen leading that charge and writing that letter, Republican Pete Olson, joining me now. Congressman, um, any response from Treasury Secretary Geithner? I know he's traveling, but any even uh, response from his office? Hi, Neil. Uh, no response from Secretary Geithner's office on the letter. Uh, we're looking forward to it. But unfortunately, uh, what we warned about in that letter, I'm afraid, has come to pass. Uh, we were concerned about the bondholders being treated fairly. And as you know, they were asked to take a $27 billion write-off. Uh, we're given an ownership interest in a term for an agreement not to uh, use legal action to challenge the bankruptcy agreement. And so what we said came to pass. Of course, the union's been given a secured creditor status. So I think it's an unfortunate uh, development in this bankruptcy. All right. Now, when I took to Fritz Henderson, one of the things he said is that uh, the government's involved right now, but some serious cuts remain, some serious adjustments remain for the unions, for everybody. You don't believe that? Uh, I've got my concerns, Neil. I mean, it's, it's the government right now has three distinct roles with GM. I mean, they're an owner, they're a lender, and they're a regulator. And those are three very, very different tasks within our government. And I don't know how they're going to make those all come together. And as you alluded to talking with uh, Mr. Henderson, there's going to be questions all the time. Is, is, when, is GM getting favorable treatment compared to other automobile makers, particularly Ford, who hasn't taken any federal bailout money? Well, so far, they seem to get favorable treatment when it comes to getting parking tickets in Manhattan, Congressman, but that's a whole separate issue. <laughs> Let me ask you what, uh, to follow up on something Fritz Henderson told me, and that is that the government uh, will be a passive investor. I'm paraphrasing here, but the gist of his comments were that if he wanted to make a fairly dramatic plant shutdowns or even talk about phasing in or out a, a car line, he is free to do that, and it won't be a yay or nay from the government supervising that. Do you believe him? Uh, I have my doubts again. I mean, this is a government who's fired his predecessor before. I mean, they, they've done it once before, and there's no reason. Again, they've got three significant roles here, owner, lender, regulator. And I don't see how they're not going to get involved and make decisions uh, for the future General Motors, which is not going to be in our country's best interest. Well, you know, it's funny you say, Congressman, because I couldn't get a straight answer, and I like him a great deal. Austin Goolsby, who sits on this uh, task force at the White House, and I asked him, what, what is the level at which you do intervene or the task force intervenes. And he just wouldn't tell me. He said it would be a matter of importance. And, and I said, well, is a plan shut down important? No answer. Is, a, is a, you know, a phasing out a car line important? You know, not, not offering subsidies on a, on a, a you know, a car important? A, a, nothing. So, so what is the level at which you think the government would intervene or make uh, darn sure it is consulted before the company does anything? Well, certainly before the executive branch intervenes, I'd hope they consult the Congress. But you're right to be concerned about the Congress. We've already seen with General Motors, the government intervened. As you recall, there was movement to uh, produce some cars in China. Right. And the union was upset with that, and that was cut off. And again, that's not in General Motors' best interest. All right, Congressman, thank you very much. Let us know if and when you hear something from the Treasury Secretary. Very Absolutely, good Neil.